This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Join an engaging IT learning community with ACI Learning and IT Pro. Hey, congratulations to Don Pizet, IT Pro's co-founder and original edutainer, and the entire TechNATO team for their 300th podcast. Good going, guys. Get your standard or premium IT Pro membership by using the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off. Check out go.acilearning.com slash TWIT to learn more. Well, um, let us get underway because it's time to hear about what Windows is providing this week. And uh, Paul, I think you're pretty excited because I, I just have to read. I need to read this opening line. This is the I, I, I read this and I had a big old LOL. It says, <clears throat> in keeping with its threat to bring, quote, continuous innovation to Windows 11... <laughs> No, this is from the article. Right. Yeah, this is from uh, your article on Toronto.com. <laughs> I'm like, to say that? <laughs> about yeah. uh, Patch yeah. Tuesday bringing new features. Yes, they have threatened to continue to innovate, and they have done so. What's going on with Windows well, 11? The threat is not innovation. The threat is the continual delivery of new features after promising that new features would only come once a year. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember, <laughs> I, I think I remember an episode uh, talking to you about how they said, oh, we're slowing things down. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, so just to actually to bring you up to speed, because I think this is kind of a, a healthy uh, framing of this conversation. You know, Microsoft releases a new feature update or what we would call a version upgrade of Windows every year now in roughly October, right? So this is the 22H2 release from last year and probably the 23H2 from this year. Uh, but it also reserves the right to release features in between at any time. Um, every once in a while, there'll be a collection of features that are big enough that internally they refer to it as a moment. Uh, we've had two of those so far, I know. Um, one was in November slash December, which I say that way because frankly, you know, they didn't get around to documenting this until last month, but basically they do a preview version of it one month and then the kind of stable version of it the following month, which is actually just two weeks later because of the timing of the release, but let's not get caught up in that. Um, so in addition to these moment updates, they also have these like other updates, right? So one of the the weird things that happen, let me see if I can get the time frame on this right, is two, 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 yeah. So two weeks before the second moment release, right, which came out in April, but the the preview version of it came out in Sorry, came out in March. The preview version came out in late, late February. Um, uh, we were kind of surprised by the timing of this thing. But since then, they've they formally announced or revealed that this is a schedule. We're going to do this now. So every time there's like a feature update coming of any kind, lowercase f, lowercase u, they'll do a preview version of it two weeks prior. So typically the, um, the feature update, such as it is, will come out on a patch Tuesday, which is what we just experienced this past Tuesday. Two weeks before that, at the very end of March, they issued the preview version of that update. So we talked about this on Windows Weekly, you know, two weeks ago, right? Um, this is a minor thing uh, from a functional standpoint. Um, and at the time, there were four features they were going to release. They ended up releasing three of them. Um, this is Microsoft Account Notifications and Start, which I haven't seen personally. But the idea there is if you bring up the Start menu, click on your profile pictures, they could offer you little informational advertisement, things like, hey, maybe you should be back backing up your folders to OneDrive, you know, that kind of thing, like Microsoft likes to do. Um, there's a search box improvements. This is kind of a hard one to explain, but if you're familiar with the way and everyone gets the language wrong, but Microsoft or Windows rather supports um, system and app color modes. You can have a dark mode where everything's dark and you can have a light mode where everything's light, but you can also kind of mix it up where the system's dark and the apps are light or vice versa. Um, there was one of those that just didn't look right with the new search box they implemented back in moment two. So that's been fixed. <laughs> Apparently, if you have a mixed color mode, I don't know how else to say that. Uh, and then there's some Microsoft Defender for endpoint improvements that will impact uh, people in managed environments. So, okay, cool. But now that the stable version is out as of this past Tuesday, they've actually added another feature. I'm hoping that Richard can explain this one because I don't actually stay understand it very much. But I can. There you go. There's something called the Windows Local Administrator Password. Oh, good. Solution. It has a oh, great wow. name. And so yeah, that's yeah. why I was wondering about it, too. I started to read about it before the yeah. show, and I thought, this is this is a lot. Yeah. So this just appeared not out of nowhere. They've been testing it, but it, it became part of this update. 
Well, yeah, and there's a lovely little storm going on in the Sysadmin Reddit channel about it at the moment, and I, and I, I feel for uh, <laughs> for Jay Simmons who just posted it up and is being steadily shredded for the past day or so. Uh, I actually did a show about the new version of Laps. Uh, back in January with our friend uh, Jeremy Moskowitz. Oh, uh, yes. But maybe we should back all oh. the way up. So, because okay. uh, this was originally built by the, the premier field engineers. So, you know, it's complicated. <laughs> I was going to say, um, <laughs> I, did I did look at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, and here's the yeah. essential issue, right? Every machine needs an administrator, a local administrator password. And normally, if you're just trying to manage this yourself, they're all the same, which means it's a great vector for being exploited. You a, a bad a bad guy gets into a machine by phishing, manages to scrounge the, the local admin password one way or the other, and now has access to every workstation in your place. So same password bad, different password good. How do you manage all of these if you've got a few hundred workstations? Enter LAPS. So years ago, the PFEs built this LAPS tool that basically gave you a way to interact with Active Directory and a management console to randomly generate passwords for the admin account for every workstation. And, it, uh, and you were able to then use a master password to get yeah, access to that to be able to log into machines. And you could configure it, and many people did, where the moment you use that password, and when you logged out, it would change the password. Oh, and 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 run write it back, which is great. Like that's proper security. You know, it's sort of an acknowledgement that breaches are inevitable. People click on the wrong link. Like that stuff happens, but you're limiting the exploit to that one machine. So containment in depth, right? Great feature. What we're talking about here is the new version of LAPS after many, the PFEs largely don't exist now and the software has been neglected for some time and finally a group picked it up and updated it to work well with Windows 11. And that's what we were talking about with Jeremy back in January on Run As. You can find the show easy enough. Uh, the only reason everybody, and, and this is a much more modernized version, it's well configured and so forth. Uh, and they maintain a legacy mode. So if you're using existing laps, you can work with the new version. It has a bunch of better features and so forth, or you can switch over to the new mode, although that'll take some effort and time. And who's got any of that if you're working in IT? So everything is fine. This is great. When we talked about it in January, awesome. What you didn't know, what we all found out by surprise, like today is the new version of laps is on by default with new installs. Now, how, so what's the <laughs> impact? And this is the conversation happening in Reddit is IT person who cares about security has had laps running for years, sets up a brand new machine. It defaults to the new laps, which he hasn't got configured because he has the legacy laps and it. it doesn't have the legacy bits and he can't log into the local admin password because it can't find it. So he now, you know, he can get manual access to the machine and physically fix it, but he probably has a pretty clear deployment time uh, pipeline where he's shipping that machine and uh, and it's already installed in his correct location. And then he's just going to remote into it to take control of it and do the things he needs to, except for that part where he can't. Now, we didn't talk about this in January because nobody knew they were going to turn it on by default. This was supposed to be an opt in thing, right. except apparently we've been opted. Hmm. Any questions? There'll be a test at the end. <laughs> I was going to say, any other Probably thoughts? nothing but questions. But to be clear, I mean, so, I mean, this is very much for managed environments, whether it's on-prem or AAD type uh, Active Directory. Um, yeah, this is a, this is your, you, you're managing workstations, right? This yep. is what this is all about it. And, you know, here's the, we, we talk about being in the cloud, but let's face it, you need something to get to the cloud with, right? Like we all have workstations and you want common management. You, you're responsible for the security of them and so forth. And how do you keep 500 distinct passwords? Right. Right. If you've got 500 workstations, the so LAPS is a huge and powerful service and you should be using it and they shouldn't be breaking things by creating a new version. Now, I, I feel for Jay because I don't think he knew it was on by default. You're talking about the guy who wrote the blog post. Yeah, the, put out the blog post and actually worked on yep. the new version of LAPS. Like, good guy by all accounts, sure. but he's having a bad... But now we can line him up on a plane like that scene in an airplane and everyone can take their turn with him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hitting with a pipe or whatever. Yeah. No. Well, that's that's already happening in Reddit. They're doing a fine job of it. Yeah. Um, and in the usual problems are there. Like, they haven't updated the docs. So, you know, you and it's not clear because 
we're going from from one to two, all the docs that currently say laps are actually all legacy docs. Right, right. And you just don't know that they're legacy docs. So there's plenty of real problems, but it sure feels like a PM at the last second said, you know, have that on by default. With <laughs> the switch. And surprise. <laughs> So awesome. now, now we're in the fire. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to reach out to Jay and, and have him do a run as with me or something sure. at some point, because I not only feel for the guy, but this is really a great tool for it. You know, if you're managing more than a half, more than workstations, you can immediately walk to, you want this, right? It is part of properly securing your office without a doubt. And, uh, and it's, and I'm, and it's a good news that it's been updated, that it's more, it's got a bunch of new features in it. That's going to be easier to maintain, but it's, yeah, they just like, did you really have to trip over the deploy? Like uh, here we are. That's common though, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we're back to this whole thing of why is patch Tuesday a day to deploy new features? Yeah. Like you kind of forget that there are real people out there doing real things with real computers. And then yeah. they do something like this and you find out how many there are. Well, and plus the schism between what the consumer is expecting from an update and what uh, it, what yeah. IT is expecting right. for an update. That's right. Yeah, IT expects it to be off by default, and that you yeah. enable it. And and then it's yeah. on a it's in a list of things I'm going to get yeah. to eventually when I work on preventative stuff. And wink, this is wink. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Look, legacy lapse works, but it has some pain. Yeah. So why would you break? I've already done the right thing, and now you're breaking me. Like, right. don't, don't be surprised. I'm a little angry. Hmm. Can I ask you, Paul, um, when they say addresses a compatibility issue that occurs because of unsupported oh, use the of registry, the registry, right? What is yep. unsupported use of the registry? Listen, what, I don't know. So oh. it's, it's amazing to me that you uh, pulled that line out because when I read these descriptions, that one's like you're just reading. It's like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> they're, they're not saying something. And the funny thing, it's, you're not the first person. So the uh, the guy who works with me that writes news ha literally asked me exactly the same question. He's like, what do you think about this? And it's yeah. like, I think I need to know more about this. I don't know. They're, they're very purposely being vague. Oh, uh, I want to know what people are doing in the registry that mm -hmm. they consider unsupported. Yep. Mm, interesting because there's there's it's, sort of it, whenever it comes to editing making changes to the registry right yeah. you have sort of the little changes that everybody knows about and then you have or that many people know about then you have the ones that are a little bit more obscure where you are asked um oh i've got this problem you go oh just make this change in the register so you think this is even more deep and, and sort of yeah let me, I'll, let me speculate okay. and i'll just base this is hopefully an educated guess um one of the controversies in windows 11 is that uh they've kind of stripped down the UI, they made it simpler and prettier and whatever, and people have lost functionality. And what people have discovered is that you can go into the registry and you can do things and like add stuff back that's missing, right? So for example, there's no way to resize the height of the taskbar, but if you know the right registry location, you can add a key, you can make it double tall or half as tall and kind of make it the way it used to be. And some people like to do stuff like that. So did Microsoft go in and change, uh, fix something to where people would, could screw around the registry and make a change like that? No, not because of individuals, but there are companies like Stardock, which has Start 11, or third parties that make whatever utilities that do things in Windows that uh, bypass things that are a little more important. For example, uh, there are utilities that prevent Edge from sucking up every search query you do, even though you chose a different browser. They're kind of circumvent this built-in behavior in Windows 11. And I bet there was a registry key in there somewhere that allowed some third-party utility to redirect something that was going to be redirected to Edge and put it back to your real browser. And Microsoft wants to prevent that because that's they do this on purpose. They're trying to um, direct certain things to the Edge browser, regardless of which browser you chose. So that my guess, I don't mean that to sound nefarious, but my right, guess is right. it's something like that. It's not some random UI setting for, like I said, for the taskbar or whatever. It's something related to something like that. That's my guess. Well, and and let's face it, when you edit the registry, you're essentially doing brain surgery on yourself. <laughs> yes, right, that's like, right. Yeah, but with a proper mirror and uh, good reflexes, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Two pairs of chromium tip tweezers, yeah. like yeah, a sterilized scalpel, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Is my hand shaking? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, it's like a weird question to have to ask, but yeah. yep.